with the second last video from Andy News for season one cut content. And I just want you to let you know, episode five, six cut content, which is the last one for season one, apparently spoils some stuff. So I need to get to like episode eight and then I can watch Andy News cut content. So the cut content for the one after this is most likely going to get delayed. But hey, let's check out episode four cut content and what we missed. So unfortunately, ReZero season two has been delayed to the summer. Oh my god, ReZero Season 2 has been delayed, guys. Oh no. Actually, if I was reacting to ReZero back then, I would have probably been like saying the same shit, saying, thank fucking god, now I can just grind and build my channel more and then farm ReZero for more later on. Which means that although we now have to wait another three months to watch Subaru suffer some more, it also gives me ample time to get through the first season's cut content. All right. And now that we're finally getting- Cap, bro! This motherfucker fucking- he dropped this shit after six. He, you had, you had a delay. My, wait, 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 wait. My understanding was they, 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 they ReZero season two was airing and he, and News was covering this and realized, ah, shit, season two is already airing. So I'm going to skip after episode five, six cut content and focus on season two. You tell me there's a delay and he dropped it without, wh why, why? Getting into the story, I'll actually be able to highlight a lot of the world building and character developing interactions that didn't quite make its way into the anime. In episode 4, there's a lot of mystery surrounding Subaru's sudden arrival, and with that comes a certain disdain towards him, particularly from Roswell, Beatrice, Rem, and Ram. Yep. There's also a whole bunch of exposition regarding the current state of Lagunica that serves to build the severity of the situation Subaru finds himself in. So let's take a look at these aspects and see once again what we missed from the light novel. Let's go. But first, this- Ah, you got me. The old Danny News videos, I just assumed that he didn't have those ads. So I always go like, but first, before we get started, but yeah, rate Shadow Legends get use reverse discount code. The Happy Roswell Mansion Family, covering the first two chapters of volume two. Subaru awoke to a much more pleasant experience than he could have ever imagined. He was in disbelief at how upper class his surroundings were. Oh yeah. He figured this could either be Amelia's personal mansion or a place owned by Reinhardt's family. Reinhardt's family gotta be super rich too. I mean, he's gotta be. Yeah, but I, this mansion is next level and Roswell has it. Roswell's a landlord. Why do you even need a mansion this size, bro? It's the maintenance and the upkeep of this shit is so crazy. Either way, he needed to figure out where he was. Looking out the window, it was... Any News did episode 4 cut content in March, and then 5, 6 in June. So you telling me during that fucking delay, during, he had three months, March, April, May. He had three fucking months to cover the rest of Reaser season 1 while season 2 was coming. And he said no. And now I'm getting mad because I'm a selfish motherfucker that just wants to farm his content. This is fucked up, man. It's currently nighttime. But even then, he found the present silence to be far too unnatural. Initially, he wanted to call out and see if anyone would respond. But when he couldn't conclude that this was a safe place to be, he decided against it. This is end there was no four. telling what would happen if he did. But he also couldn't just sit around and wait either. His father, Kenichi, always said that life must <laughs> be lived. So following his dad's advice, he decides to traverse the endless empty hallway outside of his room. After realizing that the hallway was looping, he attempts to exit through the door that was- Actually, I don't think that's his point. This is cut content. That's what he thought. So he has a dad named Kenichi. I thought this was him adding extra shit from the future into now, but like, technically, technically, this is still cut content of episode 4, where in the light novel, Subaru re reflected on what his dad said. B, he decided against it. There was no telling what would happen if he did. But he also couldn't just sit around and wait either. His father, Kenichi, always said that life must be lived. So, <laughs> yeah, life must be lived. Life, what, what else are you going to do? I guess people, I, no, that's like a, like a deep philosophical line where you need to like live your life. Yes, it sounds stupid and simple, but at the end of the day, a lot of people just sit and stagnate and doesn't really go anywhere and they waste their life doing nothing because they're too scared. Be lived. So following his dad's advice, he decides to traverse the endless empty hallway outside of his room. After realizing that the hallway was looping, he attempts to exit through the door that was closest to him. Instead of an exit, what he opened was a path to nothing, just an empty space with four walls. It was clear that this was yet another unfamiliar fantasy element of this new world. There was who knows how many rooms in this corridor that he would eventually have to open in order to escape. 
For all he knew, it could very well become a lengthy task that if not handled properly would eventually result in him going hungry or losing his mind. He I, his I wonder if... Because like, why was he already looped in, right? He literally spawns here. New checkpoint, because we saw at the end of episode 4 when he died in sleep. Did Roswell intentionally lock him up in an infinite room just to see how he would get out of it? It's like, why would you have a guest over and then immediately you have him stuck in this infinite loop of a hallway? I feel like that's like a mode that you can turn on or off. Or maybe it's just always turned on, so Super is just like skill issue, just get over it. Best option was to just return back to the room from which he came, then sleep until someone finally showed up. As we saw, this led directly to Betty's library slash bedroom. Apparently, Subaru had a knack for this kind of thing. He often found success in picking the right answer to difficult multiple choice questions all on the first try. And <laughs> so you're telling me that this has no actual relation with how Subaru is good with spirits and how Betty called Puck Nichan and I'm trying to relate that and, you know, Subaru's fucking uh, affiliation with spirits to find the hidden library, but you're telling me that it's just random luck. There's no logic, it's just RNG God, he picks the right room right every time. I feel like there's gotta be more reasoning than that. In the past, there were many similar schemes he had come across and just as easily foiled. The thing is, Beatrice had put in quite a bit of work to construct this domain from which Subaru wasn't supposed to escape. At least not so quickly anyway. So, Betty's annoyance led her to render Subaru unconscious. And she killed him. She straight up killed him here, right? Not so much by draining the mana from his body, but rather by interfering with the flow of it. A Whoa, this art is pretty cool. It's like my whole body's out of control. Well, she said that she sucked the mana out of him, right? Subaru unconscious. Not so much by draining the mana from his body, but rather by interfering with the flow of it. Hello? Essentially blocking its circulation to the point that it would be unusable. Okay. Subaru would wake up again for the second time, except now it was daytime. But that time, uh, did, did he die though here? That was kind of unclear. Did he pass out? And then did he wake up in bed? Because someone dragged him back to the bed or did he die? I, I, I don't know. It, it's, there was no confirmation, but he didn't die. All right. How do you guys know he didn't die? How do you guys know he didn't die? No, no, no. Give me proof. Second time was daytime? I don't, that's not proof. Give me proof. Is this your head canon? Did the author state this? Is there a specific passage of the light novel? If the manga, if he died there, wouldn't be Rem and Ram in room. What happened in this iteration? This time Rem and Ram was in the room, right? Right? It says he woke up the second time. No, no, did the passage say it? Because again, again I, I believe you. I believe you that he didn't die. And he just said it? Hey, retard. A random YouTuber saying that he just woke up. That, it's not a confirmation. I am literally saying, give me the source. You can't... You're just gonna listen to a random YouTuber. And yes, I believe him. I, this is the thing you guys are not getting. I trust Annie News, right? I believe him. But I am expecting you guys to give me credible source, right? To be like, in this passage of the light novel or in the manga, it was directly stated that Subaru didn't die and Betty simply made him pass out then he woke up in the room, right? The first time, there wasn't Rem and Ram in the room. The second time, they were there. Okay. So, with that logic, every time, and at the end of episode 4, he dies and wakes up to Rem and Ram in the room again. So that's like a checkpoint. So, it's almost as if the checkpoint wasn't when he woke up in episode 4, but like, when he woke up for the second time, right? Because if the checkpoint initially is always going to be the same, then the true checkpoint that I assumed was when he woke up in episode 4 thinking, oh, this is a strange roof, but well, Rem and Rab wasn't there. And then when Betty did that shit, then checkpoint was made up. That, that I can understand. For the second time, except now it was daytime, around the hour of what Rem and Ram would call 7 solar time, or what Subaru assumed was 7 a.m. Got it. He figured that he had slept for an entire day, which really wasn't that impressive considering that in the past he'd been able to sleep for two and a half days straight. That is so bad. That is just peak degenerate life. Then again, when I was like super depressed during the job hunt, no, 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 seriously. I think there'd be times like when I like graduated college 
and I was trying to get a job and the job market is so fucking hard and you're going through these different hoops and trying to interview and it's so fucking hard and they ghost you and you feel like a piece of shit because your entire worth is valued between if you have a good job or not and it seems like everything's going wrong. Truly, when I was getting like suicidal, and it's so ridiculous to think about how like getting a fucking being a fucking corporate like dog was my only dream back then because it's the survival and necessity like i would sleep for like 16 hours plus a day man straight up Dep it's you you just rot in bed and like it's easy to say like just get over it but like I, how did i even pull myself out of that long walks at night that was actually very nice long walks at night just emptying my mind and just walking around just like having that natural like dopamine hit right i think it's uh I forget the exact chemical involved when you're like uh, just like working out, but it's nice to just like have natural workouts and you know, and like ha it's important to have a hobby. You need like to have a hobby because like if you're because like if I only fixated on the job interview and I kept failing every time because it was so fucking hard, then like you're gonna get more and more just like tunneled in like a quicksand. But if you have some other thing that you can like uh, enjoy as a hobby, which was at the time I think just like just a weep shit anime or games, it's it's nice. This gave a not-so-great first impression to Ram and Ram. Funnily enough, after seeing that Subaru was having indecent thoughts about- Okay, that is an indecent thought. In, in, in the anime episode, right? In the anime episode, Subaru was being a little sus with the hands, but I don't know if this is the light novel or the manga, this is definitely sus. Them, both Ram and Ram pointed at the other twin and offered them as scapegoats for Subaru's fantasies. It was rather strange considering how sisterly they were just a couple moments ago. Now, before Subaru could choose which one, Amelia entered the room. Hmm? ...about them. Both Rem and Ram pointed at the other twin and offered them as scapegoats for Subaru's fantasies. That's an interesting one. Because they're throwing each other under the bus even though they love each other. And Does that kind of go to... I don't know, is that important there? Seeing like maybe they're not as close as they seem? I don't know. It was rather strange considering how sisterly they were just a couple moments ago. Now, before Subaru could choose which one, Amelia entered the room. Almost instantly, Subaru's mental s- By the way, between these two, Rem and Ram, pfft, Rom. Nah, bro. Rem and Ram, get the fuck out of here. You choosing between these two? I'm going with Romji, bro. Fuck these pussy-ass maids. Now, before Subaru could choose which one, Amelia entered the room. Almost instantly, Subaru's mental state improved for the better. You see, up until now he was in an unfamiliar place filled with unfamiliar people. So, finally being able to see a friendly face was extremely comforting. Amelia suggested they go to the garden, reason being that this was part of her daily routine. The garden was an area Amelia liked to use to talk to the spirits, okay. and as part of her pact with those spirits, she had to speak to them once a day. But before heading- What? There's like a requirement every day you gotta speak with the spirits once. Interesting pact. What happens if you break the pact? Out. Amelia and Subaru would first exchange their gratitude to each other, both for having been saved by the other. Here's the thing though. Subaru felt a fair amount of guilt towards Amelia. He could never truly- I just realized something. Three zero light novel audiobook. Volume 1. Hmm. Hmm. Prologue. The waste heat of the beginning. This is really... Hmm. I mean, I only bring this up because... Back, like, about qu quite a while ago, one of the most sought-out content on my channel, believe it or not, was Classroom of the Elite audiobook listening. There, there was. And, like... I don't know, I'm just, I'm just thinking of like, hmm, I, I mean, people really love this shit, why wouldn't they love ReZero, you know, light novel shit, but anyways, that's, that's a different thought for a different day. He expressed how grateful he was for when she saved his life the first time, and as much as he wanted to tell her, he couldn't. It technically never happened, so yeah. he just had to hold those emotions deep inside. That's the thing, right? Holding those emotions deep inside, every iteration, even the date at the end of episode 4, all that work is gone. Right? And they haven't really delved into how Subaru feels about these things just yet. But like, it's gotta be fucked up to try so hard every time. And then for all your progressions just to, to be gone every time. It's, it's gotta be the worst fucking feeling ever. ...happened. So he just had to hold those emotions deep inside. While in the gardens, after doing Subaru's warm-up, Amelia went back to doing what she had originally intended. 
talk to the spirits. She pulled out a green- What is she talking to them? What is she saying to them? I wonder. I wonder if the spirits are like, yo, that Subaru guy kind of sus. No. Subaru is good with spirits. I bet the spirits will say nice things about him. Talk to the spirits. She pulled out a green crystal that gave off a faint glow. It was a crystal that spirits like Puck could inhabit, from which Puck would emerge and thank Subaru for saving Amelia. Amelia then left Puck and Subaru to play while she went to a corner of the garden to talk to the lesser spirits. It's from Puck that we get a bit more context on what the spirits are. He mentions that most spirits are classified into either a lesser or greater category. Right, lesser is like not enough EXP to become like a full spirit like uh, Puck, right? But there's also quite a few that exist outside of that spectrum. The small flickering lights that Amelia is seen talking to can be easily identified as the lesser spirits. Yep. Greater spirits, on the other hand, can take many, many different forms, making them a bit harder to identify. Puck then goes on to mention the- So you tell me like Beatrice could be a spirit? Like Roswell could be a spirit? Cause like, I know of lesser spirits which are just fucking firefly dots on the screen. And then I know Puck, and then there's no other spirits I know, but... Okay, any shape or form? ...purpose of making a pact with a spirit. Pacts work like a form of contract. An agreement between a spirit and a special type of person who has okay. the innate talent to connect to the spirits and become a spirit user. Can Subaru become a spirit user because of how good he is innately with spirits? These contracts allow the spirit user to use spirit spells in accordance with the type of spirit they've made a contract with. Contracts with lesser spirits are much simpler in terms of the conditions of agreement. They only ever want basic things like daily contact, for example. Yeah, that's hilarious! They're just like the Simpson fucking OnlyFans, and they fucking message their favorite OnlyFans creator, and they DM them and saying, how was your day, baby? And then some random dude from fucking Malaysia re replies to them with an automated system, saying, I'm good. Thank you for messaging me. And they're like, oh, yes, I got my daily message back. <laughs> like, come on, man. But the type of powers they give in return don't compare much to the power from greater spirits. That's why a contract with a spirit like Puck would have much stricter conditions. Okay. Although, Puck does try to give as much in return for what his contract demands from Amelia. Anyway, Amelia had kept her talk with the spirits brief so that she could get back to taking care of things with Subaru. Now, because Puck had come into contact with Subaru, he was able to sort of read Subaru's mind. And what- Into contact. If a greater spirit like Puck touches somebody, they can- I think Puck said I can sort of read your mind, and we, may, we were making like furry jokes I think during the episode. Sort of read Subaru's mind. And what that really meant was that he can read Subaru's surface or conscious thoughts. Meaning like, and again, the fact that like Puck did not really care that much about Subaru knowing Puck's name without having met him in that timeline just just goes to show- And he can read the thoughts? Like regression, bro. Like, sh Puck must know about Return by Death. It's an ability known as Empath. Empath. And it allows Puck- <laughs> I fucking hate this word. I fucking hate this word and people that unironically like identifies them as empaths and they feel like they can understand other people's perspective because they're like, oh, I'm just such like an empath. I'm just so good with feelings. It's like, shut the fuck up, bro. That's so cringe. And it allows Puck to understand the intentions of the people he comes into contact with. That's why Puck was able to confidently declare Subaru as a non-threatening individual. Right, the hostility. This was actually part of Subaru's plan to get everyone to trust him better. After all. To everyone else, Subaru is still this mysterious person who suddenly found his way into Amelia's life. Yeah, Roswell straight up says let's kill him if he gets a little bit too suspicious, right? Subaru is extremely suspicious. He himself doesn't realize until that fucking dinner scene where Subaru is like, oh shit, there's a whole succession war going on right now for the throne? You tell me I just appeared? Of course I look suspicious. And on top of that, like, everything Subaru does, even like the butler, like, of course he wanted to become a butler to be close with Amelia. But think about it from Roswell's perspective, right? This random kid shows up and he did help Amelia get the insignia back. Absolutely, that was very useful. To the point where Roswell was w willing to just like, you know, give him more rewards. But he chooses to always stick by Amelia. Now, we know it's purely due to simping. But to them who are so cautious about you know, potential spies or assassinations. We already know that Elsa, whoever faction that Elsa was with, they're already trying to take out Amelia. There must be anti-Amelia factions and whether or not Subaru is like a double agent or not. Who really knows, right? So it makes a lot of sense, but he, Subaru just doesn't know. He thinks that he's just, just trying to get a date with the elf girl, right? No one had any concrete facts as to who he was or what his intentions were. 
That's why allowing Puck to get a good read on him was the best option. Having someone Amelia trusts vouch for him as a person is far better for his image than anything he could do himself. Then why not get Puck to vouch to Roswell and Beatrice? Beatrice is so in love with Puck. If Puck said that Subaru ain't bad, then Beatrice would be like, bet. And then Roswell, I don't know if Roswell would respect Puck enough to accept that, but I feel like that's our way to vouch and clear the fucking the slate right now. Of course, Puck did know that this was Subaru's intention. But since he knew that Subaru was friendly, he decided to let it be. Amelia was quite surprised to see how well Puck and Subaru were getting along with each other. Subaru couldn't help but mention how he hoped he could do the same with her. This just went to surprise Amelia even more, because to her, she could only take Subaru's statement as a joke. Not because she didn't want to be friends, but this because part. just the idea of a regular person like him being friends with a half-elf like her was so unimaginable. I think that goes back to the prejudice and maybe even connects to how she was hesitant for the date because she didn't want to go into the village scene with Subaru, right? I don't think Amelia herself would be so uh, prideful to think that like, oh, Subaru, this random human with me? Ain't no way, I'm gonna look bad. No, 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 no. I think it's the exact opposite because of the prejudice of the fucking half-elf and Subaru looking bad if he's associated with her and seeing in public like that. It must be what that is, right? Subaru wanted to tell her that he was serious. But he was too entranced by Amelia's warm smile. Simping! Even though she only interpreted Subaru's statement as a joke, there was something about it that made her happy. And seeing that happiness meant the world to Subaru. Anyway, with the news that Roswell had returned to the mansion... It looks like Rem is a bit more packed than Ram, huh? Rem does seem like the superior maid. Not in just terms of the skills, but just assets as well. Now... I'm gonna be a little bit biased because you guys are so biased towards Rem. So I'm gonna try to be more lenient and open towards Ram over Rem. Super but remember that Romji is better in Rem and Rom. Sorry, Rom is better in Ram and Rem. Jesus, Rem, Ram, Rom. Rem, Ram, Rom. <laughs> There's what other vowels are the Rim? We don't have a Rim yet. We don't have a Rum yet. We don't have a Room yet. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Super was escorted to the dining room. After referring to Roswell as a clown and even sitting in his chair, he would continue to- <laughs> He sat in his chair?! Hold up! He called him a clown and then sat in his important chair- That was not a show in the anime, right? In the anime, he's like, who is this clown? The rich people must have such a nice uh, hobby to hire jesters like this performer. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, what the fuck? Ain't no way, this is the landlord. And then, and then he sat on the fucking throne, dude. The sheer ignorance, the sheer amount of balls at display here. What's what Roswell's thinking? Does Roswell think that he's just an ignorant monkey? He's like, oh, you know, monkeys are just gonna be monkeys. Or what, did he take offense to be like, you motherfucker, I'm gonna kill you. That's why he died in episode four. Or maybe he's just a true jester where he just thinks that it's funny. And it's just like, huh, interesting guy. To make a fool of himself with his lack of table manners. It didn't bother Roswell very much though, as he was happy to know that Subaru felt so at ease in his mansion. This carefree attitude is what stirred Roswell's curiosity into Subaru's situation. You see, Subaru seemed to have no idea what the current state of the country was. That fact alone would have been more than enough to get him rejected at the border. Deport this immigrant! Yo, where Sensei at? We're sensei at Isekai Shikaku. We don't got time for these goddamn foreigners during such an important pivotal time of the election season, man. The fuck is he doing here? Get him out of here! So, the circumstances of Subaru's appearance into Lagunico was more than just a coincidence at this point, and it was something completely shrouded by mystery. Subaru tried to jokingly refer to himself as an undocumented immigrant. Illegal aliens, bro! Illegal aliens jumping the border! Statements like that just made Amelia more worried. And it certainly didn't help to remove the seeds of doubt from any of the others. Dude, his jokes are not working. Like, his jokes are funny to me, but like, to the people in Roswell's mansion, right? The amount of doubt they must have, the amount of suspicion they must have. I do not blame Roswell for even making that hand gesture. Imagine that you are backing one of the fucking candidates for the throne and this random kid shows up who could be a liability and does incredible suspicious things. Even if he helped Emilia get the insignia back, what if it was all part of an act, bro? Right? If I was Roswell, I could go even beyond to think that, oh, maybe the insignia being stolen, being retrieved, is all just a fucking act and he's in on it with Elsa. Like, that is not beyond the realm of possibility. Throughout this conversation, there was an interesting thing about Subaru that Roswell had noticed. 
Subaru always seemed to have a quick response to everything. Though he wasn't formally educated with the current affairs of the world, Subaru did display an active mind. Mm. One that sometimes worked against him, since it would occasionally result in these idiotic and thoughtless statements. Yes, he, he quite often, like, the offensive remarks that he makes to these random, like, he calls her, like, a drill dolly NPC, right? Like, and then she immediately knocks him out. You could say one of Subaru's mottos were to always think on his feet. It was highly in contrast to Roswell, who often Planner? chose his words carefully. As mm. I am definitely a Subaru, all right? I don't really plan what I think. I just start talking and then I go into a flow state and I don't really know what I'm gonna say next, genuinely. I don't know how this even works. I think there's like a, a specific terminology. I, I, for I forget exactly what it was. There is a word to explain like how you can basically be in this flow state absent-minded but have a line of thinking and it just continues to go somewhere. My mind just wanders. My mind, I don't, I don't plan for shit. I just... I, I see something, and I just fucking yap. Especially when it came to something as important as Lagunica's political affairs. You see, currently the nation was highly unstable. About six months ago, a very precarious situation unfolded within the, the king castle The king is walls. gone! Supposedly there was an epidemic that only affected the bloodline of the king and his descendants. That is so interesting. An epidemic, and they mentioned that. The king and the descendants. An epidemic of virus, specifically? towards that royal lineage sounds like a fucking scam to me, man. But like this plot line, I wonder, like I'll definitely keep in mind of that in episode four reactions. I saw the line epidemic and how the Kings were affected, but I was like, oh, they didn't really delve more into, it. I guess it's not that important. Maybe we'll never even like, because they got rid of the King and the like descendants, like they're, you know, we have other Royal candidates now. Right. But like, that's very interesting. An epidemic. It was a fucking bio biological attack on the Royal lineage. How? I don't know. Who would want to do that? People who don't like the fucking king. A lot of people probably have, like, uh, usually kings and empires and emperors and shit like that, they're, they're extremely corrupt and the masses, like, revolt, but they were assassinated through an epidemic in order for different candidates to rise. And wouldn't the person who is the strongest candidate, whatever faction is backing the candidate that's most likely going to win the throne, be the most suspicious in who is responsible for the epidemic? It doesn't mean it's confirmed, but at least, like, you could assume, like, hmm, what is the motives here? Like, the king's lineage was gone. Who would want to do that? People that probably think that they can go for the throne, that are very confident. That's why I'm going think to thinking, like, whoever the majority power group is behind it, maybe it's the same group that was anti Amelia. I don't know. Leaving the nation without its ruler or any heirs to take his place. There was currently a council of elders Bald. formed from members of families deeply tied to Bald, bald, bald. Council of Elders are always fucking trash. And er mo when was there ever a Council of Elders and the royalty, some sort of like um, high ranking people that was ever good, bro? A Council of Elders formed from members of families deeply tied to the nation's history. Nepotism! But the fact remained that a new king eventually needed to arise. The longer the nation went without a king, the worse their standing with other countries would become. Event other countries? Man. We're in the country of the dragon, Lunica, right? Other countries exist. The world building, the expansion, and we're still in this, and like we're still in this capital city of the country as well, man. Like other countries, man. That's just like expanding the world even more. Eventually leading to a point of international isolation. Now, Subaru's sudden appearance and convenient placement during these crucial times so is suspicious. More than suspicious enough to get him killed by other less lenient parties. Luckily, this wasn't the case right now, because Subaru had helped to retrieve Amelia's insignia. The yes, and that is the only thing going for us, that we help retrieve it, but imagine, like, I could go into conspiracy theory and assume that Subaru is part of the anti-Amelia faction that's working with Elsa and making it seem like he retrieved it, when at the end of the day, it's making you feel like you got your guard down because he helped, you know, defeat Elsa, but it's like he's actually working with Elsa. Now, we as the audience know that's not the case. But to Roswell, I could assume that he would make those kind of guesses. The symbol of Amelia's right to be a candidate for the next ruler of Lagunica. On this insignia was the iconic dragon, a representation of the very core of the dragon friend kingdom of Lagunica. Dragon friend kingdom. Interesting. Dragon friend. And there was the whole, uh, actually that makes more sense. Remember how Felt would knock on Ramji's door? And then one of the code signals was like, to the noble dragons we are, shitbags. Because? 
if the noble dragons are supposed to be the super elites of this country of the dragon kingdom then those super elites are going to look at the people in poverty as shitbags. So is that the relation of why that code was that? Many areas of the castle walls, as well as royal weapons and armor, are decorated with this dragon. Even Reinhardt's sword. With all that said, the point of the matter became clear. It couldn't be revealed that Amelia lost her badge, otherwise she would seem unsuitable to bear the responsibility of ruling a kingdom. And yeah, Roswell was like, yo, if our candidate lost that badge, it's it's already cooked. Like it's not even fucking worth doing it. You can't even be that competent. You're you're I'm gonna kill you. This was why Amelia was so hesitant to ask for anyone's help. Roswell was aware that it wasn't Amelia's fault though. Elsa was clearly working for someone who didn't want Amelia to become yes, the queen. Yes, anti Amelia. And what easier way to do that than simply just steal her badge? Upon hearing this, Subaru was finally starting to understand how big his. Wouldn't a half-elf that looks like the taboo Witch of Envy, assuming throne, be really bad? Like, just, in just terms of optics. I'm just trying to realize, like, if... How is a candidate that is already getting prejudiced for having the same look as Satella gonna win this? I don't know how the election cycle is handled. Maybe it's a trial by combat. I don't, but if it's with votes... Like, you think that people are gonna vote for Amelia? I, I would, I would think that the common person would see her and be like, half elf, witch, witch, burn at the stake, and vote anyone else in. His role truly was. The tone of the room was now becoming more serious, so Amelia decided to give a heartfelt thank you to Subaru. In response, Subaru couldn't help but extend his hand forward and pass his fingertips through Amelia's hair. At this point, Amelia was getting the feeling that Subaru had some type of hair fetish. I mean- <laughs> He likes the soft fur. He's a furry. The sewing skills he learned? Nah, sorry. The sewing skills that he displayed was learned by handmade fursuits back home. At first he was obsessed with Puck's fur, and now Amelia's hair. It was really just because Subaru loved how nice her silver hair was, and he made sure to let her know that. But as genuine as a compliment as it was, once again, Amelia just couldn't take it as such. Subaru became confused by Amelia's diverted gaze and upset expression. But that didn't stop him from continuing to stroke her hair while proceeding to ask Roswell more questions. Stroking her hair. I mean, her hair is not the only person that got stroked, right? The hair that got stroked. Ram was also on Roswell's lap getting her hair stroked. So only Ram gets to be on Roswell's lap, not Rem? Roswell likes Ram more than Rem? Mainly with regards to who he is as Amelia's primary backer. Put simply, Roswell is the Lord of Lagunica's outer regions and the nation's court magician. The nation's court magicians. And as well as the strongest magical user in this country of the dragon. That is such an insane feat. But if you ask me who would win between Roswell and Reinhardt, Reinhard, I could just totally see some bullshit blessing, divine protection called anti-magic. Any magic will never affect Reinhard. I, I could 100% see that, so like, it just... It's gonna be interesting to see how people fight the backing of Reinhard. Like, and it'll... It, who knows how many candidates there are, but like, yeah, I, I have faith in Roswell. Like, he seems very strong, but we've seen what Reinhard can do, and that kind of scares me. A title reserved for magicians of the highest rank. In fact, Roswell's the greatest magic user in the entire kingdom. Yeah, and his but only this kingdom, not other countries. Not the world, just this kingdom. His purpose is to serve as Amelia's sponsor, symbolic shield, and representative for her supporters. That being the case, it made Subaru wonder why Roswell allowed Amelia to wander the city alone. Ultimately, it was his negligence that resulted in Amelia's insignia to be stolen. Wander alone? Well, the negligence... Not really. I mean, it was stated that, like, a common person, if you can't even fucking protect your emblem, you're not even worthy of being a candidate. So I feel like that is not really an oversight by, Emil uh, by Roswell. If anything, the oversight could be going with the public as a half-elf when your PR is looking that bad and people looking at you like you're a fucking freak. Roswell even admitted that he should have taken more precautions with her, especially considering her value was significantly more than his own combined personal fortune. Ram was supposed to be with her at that time, Red hair. but because Amelia didn't want her to get in trouble, she made up some lackluster excuse as to how she wandered away from her. Blame it on Ram! Now, all this blame Subaru was laying out wasn't simply to make him look like a petty villain. He was guiding Roswell into a position where he couldn't refuse Subaru's demand. Subaru looks really cool here. 
he does not look like a cringe lord here. He he actually looks fucking sick. Like I feel aura looking at this frame, but I don't really see aura when watching the anime from Subaru's perspective. To be honest, it's usually just 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 utter cringe, <laughs> cringe and white knight bullshit. But in the manga, dude, with the light novel, whatever art this is from, this pose, goddamn. That being to hire him. Amelia was shocked to hear this, because it was like the whole name situation all over again. Subaru could have asked for anything, yet he once again demanded something so little. In a way, Amelia was kind of upset. She did- Yeah, it's like you should have more ambitions. But you forget to realize that his only ambition in life is to get- It's a sim for you, right? She's like, every reward you do is so fucking pathetic, and you're taking like such little rewards, but- to Subaru, these rewards are significant, but I wonder, because every time his reward seems insignificant and is always trying to get close to Amelia, if this makes Roswell even be more suspicious. Didn't feel at all as if she'd repaid Subaru since he kept asking for such minuscule things. But Subaru felt the same way to Amelia. It's impossible for her to understand, but everything Subaru asked for was what he truly wanted. Yeah, Amelia, you're never going to understand the mindset of a fucking brain-rotten gooner, bro, that just wants a half-elf. Even Roswell was showing a slight bit of concern on his normally relaxed face. He too thought that Subaru was asking for far too little. So, in a man- No one can possibly understand the inner machinations of the modern fucking neat, who his brain is so rotten from watching so much elif content. ...that was similar to a confession. Subaru pretty much stated that he wanted nothing more than to live under the same roof as the girl that he likes. It was embarrassing to convey how fond he was of this girl, <laughs> but it was the only way to get Roswell to be less suspicious of him. Betty looks pissed off, but you saying this shit trying to clear suspicion off of Roswell, I think is having the opposite effect. Because again, what kind of normal person would do this? Think of it from their perspective and not Subaru, right? Every action that he does seems to be... Just so insignificant in terms of the rewards he gets, but it's always just trying to stick close to the royal candidate for whatever reason. And yes, he, maybe he is just like a horny kid that's going for Amelia. But to Roswell, like, I truly wonder, like, what he's thinking of, like, hmm, another time where he's being more suspicious. We really should kill him over and over again. After hearing this, Amelia could only think of how hopeless Subaru really was. But she was also pretty hopeless herself. I mean, she was completely unaware that Subaru was talking about her. Instead, she was thinking to herself whether he was talking about Ram or Ram. Regardless, everything was pretty much settled now, and that brought the long breakfast- And remember, we, sh we should've chose permanent guest. We fucked up here by saying, I want job? No. I want to be a permanent guest that can leech off of here. Yeah, and that's what we're gonna do in the second run in episode 5, I think. Pretty much settled now, and that brought the long breakfast to its end. Subaru was then taken by Ram on a tour of the mansion. It was designed with the main wing in the center and a corridor connecting to the east and west wings. The main wing had the dining hall and Roswell's private study, while the west wing served as rooming for the servants. It also housed spare furniture and books not currently stored in Beatrice's archive. Then, the east wing had guest suites meant for housing visiting nobles, cool. alongside some other rooms intended to entertain Bathroom. guests. Bathroom! With the tour now complete, it was now time to get to work. Ram laid out her schedule in a format that followed the solar time we mentioned earlier. However, time in this world wasn't measured by something like a clock. It was measured Kumi. by what's known as a magic time crystal. Right, there's like different colors, four separate quadrants to display what, you know, um, day, time of the day it is, right? These crystals could be found scattered all throughout the Roswell Mansion, including a giant one placed right in the middle of the garden. These crystals would emit a colored light that would change depending yep. on the time of day. The day was split into two, which was then further split into four, yep. with each of these four segments representing a six-hour interval. So that was explained in episode two, Break Time with Felt, I think. Solar time was the first half of the day, likely representing daylight or the hours of the AM. And this was further divided into wind time, which represented zero to six, and fire time, which represented six to twelve. Lunar time was our PM, and this went from water time to earth time. The brightness and color of the crystal would change to match these elemental phases and signify the progression of time. Cool. Wind time emitted a green light, fire was red, water blue, and earth yellow. So if the time was say 5 wind time, then the crystal would emit a dim green light. That's how time was measured. It was supposedly common sense for anyone who lived in this world. But for Subaru, oh. this lack of knowledge just made him seem more worthless in the eyes of Ram. Now, after seeing- 
Yeah, the roast sessions from Ram and Rem was fucking amazing. In the mansion in its entirety, Subaru wondered just how Rem and Ram were able to take care of it by themselves. I mean, there did used to be other maids, but the most recent one- There was other maids? Okay. Other me. What happened to them? Did Roswell kill them? <laughs> what happened? One ended up quitting. And it's they quit? not like hiring another servant is out of the question. Okay. It's just that due to certain circumstances, that was impossible right now. Due to certain circumstances, impossible. I mean, I would be extremely cautious about bringing new employees in that's strangers. Especially with during the election season with Amelia being around. And that's why Super is also still fucking weird, right, to them. But, okay. There's a maid that quit before. Normally, servants would come to this main mother's residence. <laughs> the hand movement, bro. <laughs> Rossal straight up made this hand motion while looking at Subaru, dude. And then Ram referred to them as kids. Ram referred to Subaru and Amelia as a kid, which is very interesting. Servants would come to this main mother's residence from Roswell's lesser manners. Roswell was the head of the mother's family, so it made sense that he could request more help from the residences where his relatives live. But apparently- His relatives live somewhere else? The more Mathers family? Okay, okay. Apparently, right now, Roswell's relationship with his family was a little bit complicated. Hmm. And given the delicate situation he put himself in, it wasn't really the best time to bring outsiders into the family. Interesting. That's pretty much all Ram would say before finally taking Subaru to do some work. Man, I want some fucking Mathers family backstory lore, bro. I want the whole fucking lineage. Like, Roswell is a fascinating character. Because he just seems like a clown. He's got the clown makeup on. But he's also very... He has that aura of like... Feels sinister. Right? He's joking around. Enter entertaining Subaru. Right? Laughing here and there. But behind the scenes, like you can see how much of a schemer he is. And how cautious he might even be. So like, Roswell L. Mathers is a very, very interesting character. And... Usually anytime Dio's voice actor voices somebody in the show, they're gonna be one of my favorite characters too. They're just always good, but like Roswell's performance right now, like this character's like voice acting because of the way that he like enunciates certain words for whatever reasons, the tone shifted, the pitch is all fluctuating. It's amazing. Now, although we're not quite at the end of episode four yet, I think here's a good place to stop. All right. Clearly there was a decent amount of world building and exposition left out. Absolutely, like this episode four, even though it seems like nothing happened, so much happened. This shit was like a fucking one hour reaction just yapping about every little thing that they introduced. A lot of lore was shown in episode 4. And even some details behind characters who I assume play a more important role later down the road. But that's not that bad since we're finally avoiding a lot of overlap with the anime and actually getting into some new and useful information. So be sure to keep an eye out for the next cut content which will cover the rest of episode 4 and like... You motherfucker. Why did you stop at episode 5, 6, man? Why did you do this to me? But hey, please go give Mr. Andy news a like. There's a video link. Go sub to the channel if you haven't. And I will see you guys on the next ReZero cut content, which is, remember, going to be delayed because I want to avoid the 5, 6 cut content spoilers, which apparently has some content up to episode 8 in the actual anime. All right? So just remember that. But then again, you know what the best part is? Only 10% of you fucking retards are watching this right now. And the other 90% of the monkeys who are going to be complaining are the ones that need to hear this. So I'm wasting my time. Yep. I'm wasting my time.